uh, some changes to the lines today. What are you looking to try and generate? Yeah, just get some energy from certain guys. I think, uh, I mean, you can't just go by practice, but it was really good practice today. So hopefully it uh, energized some people. Putting Connor with PD, what do you hope he can bring to that line? Yeah, maybe they can find, a, you know, with Hoggy, like a really good four-track line, hold on to pucks. Um, you know, uh, some creativity there. Yeah, I'm anxious to see how they do tomorrow. Uh, I, th- I think they're going to be good. I, I, they, had, they had a really good practice today. Rick, why do things go stale on lines? Is it because other teams figured them out, or <clears throat> why do they go stale sometimes? Yeah, I think it's uh, sometimes complacency. Um, you know, sometimes somebody's looking for the other guy to maybe do something where you should do it. I, I mean, there's a combination of things, but I think every once in a while it's a long season. It adds juice when you put different people together. And, and, and urgency, too. It creates urgency for the players. No, hey, man, we're, they're switching lines. I better get my game together. So there's a lot of different factors. You've missed Dakota for a lot of reasons. How much has the trickle-down effect of not having that line and, and having to blend things impacted the way things have gone for you guys? Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, Dakota's a big part of our team. But that's where you're looking for people to step up. You know, so if you're, you know, you're getting a couple extra minutes in different roles, you know, embrace it. So, um yeah, I mean, we're not having Dakota here for a little bit more, but that means there's opportunity for other guys. I'm a big opportunity guy, so, like, seize the moment. At this point in the season, are you guys digging deep as a coaching staff to try to get more creative, maybe try some different <clears throat> tactics at this point to get them playing the way that you want? Yeah, you got to be careful. You can't go to the bag too much, but I think it's important that, I mean, I looked at I looked at the scans today. They were in first place. Like, there's a lot of positives here, but – we also have to understand where our game's at, and we got to rectify it. So it's my job <clears throat> is to, to help the players out understanding or give them some different ideas to get their you know uh, level of interest up. <clears throat> but it's also them. There, you know, I just I like I said I know I, I said it three times. They, there was a great practice day. I, 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 they know how we felt after the game, and um, they know the urgency. You don't even have to tell them. Like today, there's there's no talk of urgency. They know that. You know, uh, if we do the right things, you get good results. How do you make sure that the urgency stays? Because you guys have come firing out of a can and you've opened the scoring in the first yeah. two minutes of each of the games here on the homestand. So the starts haven't been the issue for you. No, the starts haven't. It's just been a lull in the halfway through the game. Um, you know, it's it's you know we t- we t- you know we talk about you meet pressure with pressure, and I think you, a lot of guys right now are kind of waiting for the other guy, and um, it doesn't it hasn't happened a lot this year though. So let's fall back on the good stuff. You know, we can, we can preach the negative. Yeah, we're pissed and this and that. But at the end of the day, the, the, the large sample size is we've done it. Yeah, the heat's a little hot, hotter now. We get it. But uh, it's the same game. It's the same thing. You just got to, you know, just gotta, uh, everybody's got to up their game a little bit, you know, just another level. Philosophical question for you about <clears throat> timeouts. When games, when you feel momentum yeah. is shifting and stuff in game, are you a guy that, Saves your timeout till the end of the game, or do you think there were opportunities to just try to either send a message to your group or settle things down as that momentum is kind of getting away? Yeah, it's a good question. I've always struggled with if when to do it. When <clears throat> it's a feel thing, I think uh, when coaches are doing their job, you could you don't need a timeout to have instruction. You, even when there's a there's a commercial break, or even during the, there's a whistle, you know, a coach can talk to a, a group of players, but. Um, yeah, there's sometimes I probably this year probably should have used it halfway through the game. Uh, that's that's on me. But a lot of times I think it's overrated. Going back, on, sorry, going back to those kind of mid-game lulls, how much oh. of that comes from facing these teams that are really playing with a sense of desperation? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, but to me, it's an, as an individual. Like, what's your identity? You know, what, what, who are you for the team? And then when pressure hits us or things are going away, can you get? your identity back as an individual. Yeah, the team, it's a team game, don't get me wrong, but if you're the next guy going up and the team's all over us and you know we're kind of scrambling, can you be that, can you be a guy with a four checker where you make you do a good job of puck placement, get on their defense, win a battle, keep that puck in the in the corner for a little bit, that stops momentum. Or do you, you know, I think the next guy goes out and then he'll kind of fly by a guy and then the other guy flies and all of a sudden they're coming back a million miles an hour at us. Can somebody stop the momentum? Or a group of players stop the momentum. That's what you're looking for when you when you face pressure. Is that what you're talking about when you've been <clears throat> preaching about that mentality this time of year? Yeah, I, I think um, less is more sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I don't want to, to dump the puck in all the time, but if a team's all over you, 
and you got a, your buddy with you, maybe you just want to chip in his corner just to allow maybe he gets a hit or he, he grabs a puck to hold, you know, to stop momentum instead of high, then it, instead of another high risk play. All you're doing is putting gasoline on a fire. You know, we need some, you know, you want to put water on the fire, right? So just calm the thing, situation down. So, and like I said, I, I got to give you guys credit for most of the year, we've done a nice job and we've bounced back from adversity. You said on Saturday that you've got to break the seal. That yeah. There's always more in the tank. Sure. But for I guys believe. who haven't been there, haven't had to level up for the playoffs because right. they haven't been in the playoffs, how is it hard to convince them? Is it hard to get them to believe that they have more in themselves than what they've already given you for 60, whatever it is, seven games? Yeah, I don't think it's hard to convince them. I think they just have to experience it. You know, like going into adversity, get type of game where you know you have to have a good effort. Like tomorrow, you know, we, we need a good effort from the guys. So that's a break the seal moment for me tomorrow. You know, you look at those, these moments where, <clears throat> yeah, there's some guys, they want to play better. So <clears throat> what are you willing to do? And um, there is more, you know, there's, three or more more strides to get back in your end, um, even though you're dead tired. So that's when I talk about breaking the seal or, you know, blocking a shot. You know, there's a there's a sometimes in a game where, yeah, listen, nobody ever's gonna dive in front of the pucks all the time, but there's gonna be some moments where you need that guy to block that shot. It doesn't matter what number or your name on the jersey is, that critical moment, that's breaking a seal moment. Like there's a bunch of them. I, I don't want to bore you guys, but I think that's something that we're you know, we're trying to get at. You're never boring. No, no, I'm not just saying. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you, you have. This has been a bit of a recurring theme for you when talking to us the last week or two hmm. about leveling up and being at another level, like not waiting until April. So, in your experience, you've been to many playoffs as a player. Why is it so important hmm. that you're at that level? Why can't you go to the last week and then ramp? ramp up well because i'm a i'm a rep guy whether it's physically or mentally you just don't turn things on like it's up oh, uh, we're playing the playoffs in three days i'm going to start the back check or i'm going to start to shoot the puck better now it starts now in practice you know you're you're it's all mental and physical reps you know we do drills out there today that are you know p putting players in position when a team's four check is hard in the neutral where should we all go in these three? so the reps of it and then the guys can feel it and then when in the, the pressure does hit, there you know we've done this. I've done this a million times in my head and in, in practice. So now I can accept the you know the um, the pressure when it comes to me. When you have a group that many of them haven't experienced the playoffs, how valuable is it that your coaching staff has just a wealth of playoff experience? Yeah, and we got to be calm too. Like you know, like you know, you're in a you're in a plane and the cockpit doors open, and you see the pilot you know in turbulence biting his nails. And uh, sweating, <laughs> what are you, what are you going to do, right? So, you know, I can't be like, you know, I can't be biting my nails being pissed. Like, I got to be calm, too. So there's a learning lesson for the coach, too. But saying that, you know, you got the twins. They played big games. Adam Foote, you know, it's two tough Stanley Cup. Uh, Gonch, when he's here, Stanley Cup guy. Mike Yo's coached 25 years in the league, you know. I've been around the block. So I think use our calmness, too. Like, you can't all, you know, sure, there's going to be some times they're going to get a kick in the butt. But you also got to give them some calmness too, where we're not panicking too. Rick, you, you panicking. pointed out the fact the other night post game the number of block shots, but also the number of missed yeah. shots. Was that just a one off? Like, is that or has that been a, an issue for your? A little bit of an issue. We had like we had a two on one drill, with five guys missing that in a row, like five twenty. Like that that comes down to like you got to bear down. You know that's uh, and you know Clarky talks about shot velocity. You know you're in a bad angle. It's probably not the right time to rip a puck at the goalie. Maybe it's put, put it on the goalie where it, there might be a rebound for your buddy. I think these are the little things that we got to learn that, hey, you're looking for the next play. It doesn't always have to be a rip, you know, high and wide. You know, sometimes in the little pads, the rebound to, your, to the guy on the weak side is the good play. So that, but that's, those are learning things. I, I still think it's bearing down on shots. I mean, that's the reps. You know, you should be shooting pucks after every day. And, you don't leave the ice if you hit, you got to hit 20 in a row, you know, with an empty net before you get off the ice. That's the sort of toughness that you got to do. In recent right. games, you've talked a lot about players needing to move their feet. Yeah. Is moving feet uh, a symptom of something else, or is it something that you specifically can address? Just moving. Yeah, feet? that's that's a that's a good question. Like because some guys, you know, sometimes don't move their feet because and I hate to say it, not the pressure, the intensity, and all of a sudden, what do you do? You you kind of freeze a little bit instead of knowing the puck is coming to me. Okay, what, when I get it, what am I looking for? Well, 
the defense is in front of me. I probably want to hold it and get away from it. Oh, the, the, you know, the defense is the right me. I'm going to take it in the net. I think you're going to make that play two seconds. It's like chess, two seconds before. Um, but it's also in practice, you know, moving your feet. It's, it's, a, it's a, you know, you look at like Pod Coles and last year he'd catch it, you know, he'd freeze. Now if you watch him, he's starting to catch the puck and he's moving. So that comes with experience and, 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 and mental reps or uh, physical reps too. Rick, you've had a lot of players come up from Abbotsford and they, they fit into your lineup seamlessly. Is that the benefit of teaching the same things there that you're doing here so they don't have to think about it when they get here? Yeah, it's, it's a connection with the, with the coaches down there, the philosophy that we all have here. The, um, you know, the guy like Jeremy Colton, we, we have the same views. He's a good, he's a good coach. He, I don't want him to do exactly what I say because I think he's got to be creative, do his own things. But for the most part, we think the same way, so he's preaching the same thing. So it makes it easier when they get called up. But one of the things I notice is when guys come up like Hoglander, when he came back, he was much stronger on the puck, worked harder in the corners on the walls. Is that something that's a philosophy throughout the organization? Oh, a million percent. You know, that's why Hoggy went down, you know, learning the, the, the play without the puck. You know, he's, he's getting better. But he started last year. I mean, there was... There was a lot of warts on that last year that Jeremy had to go through with him than us at the beginning of the year, but he's started to get his game together and now he's you know he's starting to understand the system. So that's just that's the product of the the, 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 the conveyor belt, right? Draft picks to you know to, to the minor leagues to us. You know who's t you know Mike Karmaseric and uh, Samuelson, our, our, our development guys, are teaching the same things we're asking. How do we handle wall battles? How so then when they get up here. They've, you know, they they understand how to play, how we want them to play. You talk it's about the word because when when guys go down, maybe they're a little bit disappointed. But Hoglander said he really needed it, and he understood that he needed it. Yeah, you look at Hoglander. You look at I know Podsy was a little upset, but he took it, and look at him. Um, you know, look at a guy like Baines. You know, he came over. A lot of people love this guy, even though he got sent down. He really. Was a pre not so much appreciated, but he enjoyed the time. But he knows what he's got to do when he gets back up. Like I assume next time he gets a two on one, he'll probably shoot it, right? But he's had a couple there, <laughs> and I think he was trying to, you know, you know, and that that happens. And uh, he'll be. I don't think he'll defer as much next time he's up. So there's a learning lesson. You talk about some of the work that you guys have done with Hoaglander here at the NHL level. How challenging is it for you to? work on the player development side of things when you've got a really good team at the NHL level and it's a lot about the results as opposed to, you know, maybe in past years or with past teams, you're out of it late in the season and it's all about player development. Right, exactly, yeah. Well, <laughs> I think, you know, we're, we're doing, I mean, like I've only been a year, but you can tell we're doing it right, you know, making sure that, you know, the, the, the guy's not a finished product, right? So how are we trying to make him as best, you know, mold him into a, a Canuck? And um, it starts from, like I said, our development program is really good. You know, the guys that uh, Jim and Patrick hired, I think they were here before, but there's a couple other guys. Uh, and then it just goes, you know, preaches all the way to Jeremy, all the way up. And then, you know, to our assistant coaches and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. We've seen from Elias Pettersson, he can take over a game. Yeah. We've seen it in the past. Haven't seen it as much recently. Yeah. Is part of the, the line juggling, the changing things up for him is that trying to get him back to that level where he is able to take over games well it's communication like uh, with pd like i want to put him in the most comfortable positions where he can do his thing but he also said to me he was talking i'm not moving my feet. Like, he'll tell me listen i gotta get my game going i gotta move my feet it's not like he doesn't know like i know and i said it like he was really good practice like his practice was really good today i saw his move his feet scored a couple goals on tone that's the sort of stuff that he just got to get those in his head that if i move my feet Give me the puck mentality, um, you know, even defensively, you know, make sure I'm on the right side of the piles. That's when he's at his best. So, um, you know, he's just got to, he's got to chip away at his game. Like he had a good practice. Today. That's all you should think about today. Go into Buffalo, go have some fun. You know, you get a couple of fun line mates and, and just go do your thing. Um, I think that's when he's at his best, when he has his mind clear. Connor, what have you guys been focused on the last day and a half and trying to get ready for the next one? Uh, just playing with some more pace, um, and obviously getting back to some of the some of the staples we have of just come back in the D zone, stopping, um, and just playing playing our style. And we have had two uh, well, hard practice today, so I feel uh, we'll, we'll come out with some good uh, juice tomorrow. We've talked about what your opponents have to play for, whether they're fighting for a playoff spot and whatnot. Of course, you guys care about the spot and the standings, but what's most important? What are you mostly playing for at this point? To win, you know. I mean, 
It's, I mean, it's, uh, I guess, I guess just a win. I don't know. <laughs> is there something like you want to get back to in your own game, particularly that, that uh, is most well, motivating? Yeah, you want to play well. You want to play well, uh, especially this time of year. These are important games, and um, you know you can't let bad habits creep in. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, all these games are going to be tight, so they're all learning lessons for us. Learn how to play in, in high-pressure games. Uh, when teams are throwing everything they have at you, so um, but no, they're exciting to play in. You know, even uh, last game wasn't our best, but you could feel uh, the energy in the third. Um, you know, we had a push, but obviously too little, too late. How different is the experience for you guys at this time of the year, being in the position you're in now, as opposed to the last couple of years? And how much do you think you're yeah, learning? You, you know the answer to that. Obviously, it was tough here the last two years. Um, you know, finishing the season off. Uh, a lot of uncertainty, so um, it's it's been nice. Obviously, it's 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 fun being in it. It's fun watching the standings. It's fun uh, playing for meaningful stuff and and uh, just competing every night. Obviously, you know you compete even when you're out of it, but uh, the game ends and there's not really you know much much emotion after. It's just an, another day, but this year you know you can feel the excitement in the building, you can feel the excitement in the city, running into people, and it's just uh, it's been a fun time of year so far. How much are you guys learning from how different it is this time around in terms of the expectations and all that stuff? Yeah, well, you just feel that you feel the pressure in the games. Uh, you know, like, like a team like Washington, you know, is playing for for their lives to get in, and that's what you have to you have to counter each each night. But you know, we got a lot of guys in here that have gone through it. Um, I've been in some you know some races down the stretch. Um, but uh, it's you know we've had some guys that have gone on some deep runs and won cups that are you know definitely helping us through it after games talking and you know Cole, Kohler's been huge for our group right now and uh, you know it's just like I said we're learning each each day. With all that's going on and all the emotion, how do you focus on the now? Oh, that's your job, just to come in and um, you know compartmentalize, just come in and focus and get ready and you know when, when you don't have a game uh, that we wanted to, it's pretty easy just to. to to reset and get right back at it. We talked, to you, the, we talked to you the other day, and you're talking about trying to find some chemistry with uh, Lindy and, and Pods and different line mates here today. I mean, is that just part of the job too? Is uh, wherever the coach puts you, you just got to adapt as quickly as you can. Yeah, well, we won a lot more this year, so we haven't switched lines um, like previous years. Felt like the last couple of years it was a new line every day. So, um, but this is uh, obviously I've played with PD in the past. Very exciting player to play with, uh, Hoggy. Is the best, you know. It just does everything. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. It's fun, fun guy to be, uh, to be around and to play with. So we're, we're both excited, um, and uh, just come in and play with a lot of energy tomorrow. How much do you appreciate about the growth in his game as a guy that kind of has a, a similar style yeah. of way of playing? Yeah, has similar trajectory as myself. Um, uh, and he, uh, you know, he worked maybe not as many AHL games, but he, uh, he, he worked his way here, and he, he's been a huge player for us this year. Um, you know, produces even strength, which is really hard to do. And, uh, you know, he never, never complains, just plays his minutes and, and plays them to as hard as he can. So he's, uh, he's, he's, he's just fun to be around, uh, you know, and I, and I enjoy watching him. He's going to keep getting better and better, which is, which is huge. You and Homelander have been two of the most effective players at even strength for the Canucks this season. What do you think you can help Pedersen with in that regards? I would say Petey's been a little more effective, five and five, <laughs> but uh, he, there's there's not much I can help him with. He's a, he's a terrific player. He's uh, you know does everything um, at such an exceptional level. So I think you know our job is just to come in and play with some energy, maybe create some space down low, and get on the forecheck for him. But you know he does a lot on his own that uh, you know is is at a high high level.